Mixing is, you know, it can take out, it can take days to mix one song. What you're doing is you may have 24 tracks of different information: a kick drum, snare drum, and tom tom, overhead, hi hat, bass, guitar, and the guitar amp, and the piano left, piano or piano low, piano high. And then the certain horns and strings. You got all of these tracks full of this information, and you have to fix the little repair that happened on this track. Maybe uh, maybe this sax was out of tune. You got to fix that. Maybe uh, this came in late. Try to fix that. Then then blend them all with the right amount of reverb or the right amount of limiting or the right amount of whatever you're going to do with your devices to make this thing sound like a record. Could take you. Uh, three or four hours or it could take you two days or more to do one song. So consequently you do these things over a period of time, the mixing. Well now when you've got all of the songs mixed, you want to make it all sound as if it's all happened at the same time, you know, the same band. Where you recorded it over a period of a couple months, different days, different this, different mics maybe. So now what you have is a, maybe 10 or 12 or 15 different songs that are all mixed and they're all blended nice. But they don't sound like they come from the same record. So now it goes to the mastering. The mastering will kind of smooth everything out and a little equalization, maybe a little compression to just kind of tuck everything in. The mastering room the limiter that they have is the most expensive. The equalizers that they have are the top in the business because all they need is two. They don't need 16 limiters like you do in the studio and they don't need 24 tracks or 32 tracks of equalization like you. They just need two because they're only dealing with stereo recordings. So they have the best of the best. And the gentleman that does, that's what he does all, or the lady, that's what they do all day long. They make, okay, let me hear what it is. Okay, now let me make this sound like it's one band, one record, one or one CD. And let me just make sure that it doesn't, that there's not too much bottom end so that when it actually goes onto the CD, it doesn't print with that because it's too much bottom for what the CD is holding. The digitally remastered CDs are really saying we're taking that uh, master tape probably before it was mastered because it would have to have been mastered for vinyl because the frequency response in the vinyl which means what the vinyl can handle is different than the CD or the cassette because when you're mastering for the CD or for the vinyl the, uh, the equalization the limiting and everything is very important and everything should be mastered even though you've spent hours and days mixing it you should have another fresh set of ears Okay, this is what I've done, you know. Oh, well, you know, I can see this. Let me smooth it up. Boom, and all of a sudden it sounds like the CD that you made, you know.